Hey guys, it's Austin. Welcome to your fourth Roblox Luigi scripting tutorial. Today I'm going to talk to you guys about events. So I know I made a video about events in my other tutorial series, but now I'm going to go over some GUI specific events that you can use to make your stuff all pretty like. So I'm going to go on the wiki here and we're going to search up the three basic GUI elements. Text label text button text uh, box um, I'm just gonna scroll down to events on all of them so uh, some of these have like base parts or something they have a lot of the same basic events like mouse enter mouse leave uh, mouse moved uh, and some mobile stuff down towards the bottom um, so I'm gonna set up screen GUI here gonna put uh, text label uh, no I don't think we'll use a text label Okay, text button. We're gonna use a text button first. Uh, I don't think I'll go over events of text label because since they're just there to label stuff, there's not really anything, any event specific to them that you can't do with all these other objects here. Um, so starting with a text button, this is probably the most useful GUI element there is because you click it, it does stuff. Simple as that. So, ugh, local script, we're gonna insert a local script because we don't want a server script since starter GUI is client side. So, uh, let's type out, let's make this kill you when you click it. Local player equals game.players dot local player and we can use local player because this is a local script script dot parent dot mouse button one click connect it to a function and so common um, I guess I'll call it a misconception among text buttons is that you're supposed to use the mouse button one down event this is inefficient because the mouse button one click is when you want to just click something and be done with it but if you're using mouse button one down then it means you want to hold your mouse button down on the GUI element for maybe say uh, charging your magic stat in an RPG or something I don't know uh, I've seen it used in a Dragon Ball Z game where you charge your key and that's pretty much like magic energy but yeah you should always use the mouse button one click if you just want to click something and say buy an item from a shop or teleport somewhere always use the mouse button one click just know the difference uh, so back on top topic here player dot character dot humanoid dot health equals zero so what this does is we get the character from the local player and this might look weird to you guys if you've never seen that before but if we search up player on the wiki we see properties and we see a model named character a model containing the humanoid arms legs torso and scripts blah 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 of the player's character this property is set to nil and is set when the player's character spawns so uh, you can think of it as a property, but pretty much it's just your physical uh, avatar inside of workspace in game. And then we select the humanoid in that, the health property, set it to zero. Let's test this bad boy out. It kills us. <coughs> so. Uh, Sometimes when you're referencing the player in a local script, you might be referencing before the player's 
uh, loaded because it's set to nil until the character spawns. So right after you define player, for this is best practice, you should always do repeat wait until player.character and then you can define character. And that's just for safety. Uh, and that obviously just loops await until player.character equals true or until it loads. Uh, so yeah, that's a little bit of best practice for you guys. Um, text button, uh, mouse button, one click, mouse button, two click. Mouse button one click is uh, when you click with the left little clicker thing. I forgot what it's called of your mouse. And then mouse button two click is for the right side. Same with mouse button one and two down and one and two up. Um, drag begin, drag stopped. Uh, they have a, where is it? They have a draggable property somewhere, I thought. Yeah, here it is, all the way down here. Uh, that just has to do with if that drag is enabled, then they can drag it, and uh, these fire when the drag begins and when the drag stops, obviously. Uh, input begin. Not going to go into that right now because that has to do with user input service. All three of these do actually, and a lot of the mobile controls down here that I mentioned earlier which I'm going to go over in a separate tutorial on a separate series. User input service is really cool. Um, so, mouse enter, mouse leave, mouse moved. A mouse move fires when you move a mouse inside a GUI element. Uh, there aren't a lot of applicable uses for this, I don't think. I mean, say you want to enter your mouse into something and have a label follow your mouse and show. That requires a little bit of math, which is my strongest point, so I'm not going to go into that. But that's an example of use of mouse moved. <clears throat> so now I'm going to show you guys mouse enter and mouse leave. So say you're making a nice little GUI shop and you have this big box full of buttons to buy stuff. So you have uh, gravity coil on some button. You can move your mouse into that button and then maybe off to the side here you can have another box with a picture of a gravity coil and information about it like price, description, co oh I already said that. <laughs> uh, yeah, you would mess with the, you would toggle the visible property and then mouse leave would fire when they leave the mouse you could make it disappear again and clear all that information and then load it up again for another text button when you mouse into it uh, so on so now we're gonna demonstrate mouse enter and leave events script dot parent dot mouse enter connect function script dot parent dot mouse leave connect function Another best practice is also um, wait for child humanoid. to wait for child on your humanoid up here when you're defining your variables, just for another safety measure in case you try to reference the humanoid before it's loaded. Um, humanoid dot health equals fifty. Humanoid dot health equals one hundred. And we mouse enter, changes our health to 50, leave 100, 50, 100, 50, 100, 50, 100, 50, 100. 50, 100, 50, 100, 50, 100. Yeah. I think that's all I'm gonna go over for a text button, because these clicking events are really the only thing specific to text buttons. <coughs> now text box. Um, 
this is sort of like a text label except it's you can think of it as a sort of or it's like a text label in the way that it doesn't have a lot of specific events for it being a box but um this is mainly used for things like forms or anywhere you can enter data into a field or as you guys have probably seen it more often lately a Twitter code GUI or some sort of social media code GUI where you enter a code and um, you get an item or cash or something I don't know uh, so there are two main events for this here focus and focus lost focused isn't really special I can't think of a time where anyone might ever use this but focus loss is what they use to make those Twitter GUIs uh, it has two parameters enter pressed input that caused focus lost um, enter pressed the enter pressed argument is true if the client pressed enter to lose focus meaning uh, text button if they clicked it and they started typing in it and then they pressed enter that causes you to not be able to type it until you click again um, that's what that does if inter the enter press would be true if they did that or if they just click somewhere else to lose focus of it then it would be false this item should be used with a local script in order to work as expected in online mode yeah, you should always use local scripts when you're working in starter GUI because that's client side. The example shown below will print focus was lost because enter was pressed whenever the text box loses focus as a result of the enter key being pressed. Uh, yeah, local script is a child of text box. Mm. I'll show you guys how to make a code GUI real quick. Local script. Um, By the way, I'm not really worrying about the design of anything here too much, since we're not uh, looking into actual design, just functionality. 0.5, oops. Um, background color, make it a light blue. Tick scaled aerial bold source ends. Okay. Source sins will work, so that's pretty. Enter code here. I know some people have like the text box and then a text button off to the side to uh, like press click to confirm or something, but that's actually unnecessary. Script.parent.focus. Oh, wait, I just inserted a text button again. Silly me. I'll use my handy dandy class changer plugin to change it to a text box and keep all the properties without having to do that extra work of inserting it again. Focus lost. Dot. Focus clear text on focus. That's interesting. Hmm. Focus lost. Connect function. Uh, <coughs> we'll use the interpressed parameter. And uh, this is, yeah, input object that also has to do with user input service, so I'll go over that in another video. Uh, for now, we'll just use the enter pressed argument. Uh, like a variable, it can be called anything. It be, could be called cat, and it would matter if cat then do whatever. think I'll make this give you a tool when you enter it. Uh, here's a rocket launcher. Move it to replicated storage because that's a good place to store stuff. If enter press then if script.parent.text equals uh, what do we want our code to be? Example Twitter code then game get service replicated storage wait for child rocket launcher clone dot parent equals player 
locked up backpack. And that puts it in their backpack here at the bottom of the screen and shows up as a tool for them to select. Now saying game get service to any of these is pretty much just like game dot replicated storage. A get service is just an equally clean way, if not cleaner way of doing that, that I just prefer using. Uh, you wait for the child rocket launcher inside here, replicated storage, to be safe. Then you use the clone method on it and set its oops, set its parent to the player's backpack. I have to find the player up here. Uh, let's test it out. Example Twitter code. I'm gonna press enter. Text is now a valid member of local script. Oh, parent dot text. Silly me. I'm a derpy scripter. I do stuff like that a lot. Make typos in my code, then I have to republish a whole game again. Enter. I pressed enter, and it gave me the tool. And it's not working because. I don't know why, but that's not my fault. Well, arm movement's pretty cool. The whole rotation thing they got going on there. Uh, not an example. Twitter code. Press enter, it doesn't give me anything. Because it was the wrong Twitter code. Um, then I might make a subvert video on how to make an actual Twitter code GUI that like confirms on the text if you've gotten it right or not or something cool like that. Do, do, do. Um, so other GUI elements, image labels are like text labels, they're just there to show. Uh, image buttons serve the same purpose as a text button except they have images on them. Do, 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 do. I guess that's all the events I'm going to go over for with you guys for today. If you guys need me to cover anything else, I'll try to do that in another video. Just in the comments, let me know if you guys want something specific, and I'll do that. I think my next video is going to be on methods for GUIs, or built-in functions, as you guys might know them. Yeah, there are some cool ones here, mostly tweening, that might be what my next video is on, tweening. Alright, so, um, I will see you guys next time.